Well, hello everybody. <laughs> so today um, we had a very interesting topic. Um, it was brought up by two reporters in the morning. Uh, one uh, was a young lady uh, from the um, Pulimetro and another one was from another uh, young man, <laughs> well, kind of a middle-aged man, but anyway, so from somebody else. But anyway, the discussion today was discussing uh, violence in Mexico. And rather than do the whole um, conference word for word, I kind of did like a written um, uh, format of it. But anyway, so this was uh, today's uh, conference. And, um, and so I kind of outlined it. So today, um, AMLO uh, was uh, discussing violence in general uh, for, regarding the questions um, that they had um, today. Okay. Oh. Okay. So let's move this over a tad. Um, I want you to be able to read the whole thing. And then also let me move me down a little so I'm not in the way. Okay. Um, so uh, this is the link, um, and I'll I'll put that in the bottom. Uh, and this is where uh, at seven five zero, Miss Vargas from Pulimetro um, asked. Uh, um, well, I didn't want to do that. Uh, she asked a question. She said, "What about the promise that you made six months ago on uh, yesterday uh, to end violence?" And uh, this is um, what AMLO said to that. He said, we are doing well, actually. Naturally, it takes time, but we're making fundamental advancements. And uh, being uh, it, in the well-being of the uh, population. Uh, in quantitative terms, peace is required for well-being. And so this this, this times is so that I could find it on the on the uh, screen, you know. Um, and I could probably do that. Let's go ahead and do it that way. I'm going to put the screen on, and I'll be able to read the times over there. But so let's go to let's say oh. Uh, okay, so oh eight. Uh, 30 or let's say when she asked the question was somewhere around here right right there so she asked if um you know you know you promised that violence would have ended and this is where he says you know that um they're doing good actually so just so you know, this I took it kind of a word for word on there, okay? So I'm going to pause that there. And we're going to go back to the written text of this, okay? Okay, so anyway, he says 80% um, of the actions that are, uh, are destined for well-being without violence. And uh, what it, and he says, what is well-being? As the word indicates, uh, being well. It's being well materially, and well being of the soul. The remaining uh, the remaining twenty percent is ten uh, <laughs> is uh, not permitting corruption uh, in matters of public safety working in a coordinated manner, perseverance, professionalism of policy, uh, policing bodies, not allowing impunity uh, or being, which means being an unpunishable. And I, and I put that on there because I think impunity is a word that a lot of people just don't use very often and might not really know what it means, but it means some people were um, uh, above the law. So that's what that means. But, um, and then not linking, not linking delinquency with authority. 
and 1055 that's where you would find it on the video um, and controlling contraband of arms so he says this is a series of actions but the principal thing is well-being and uh, then on 11 at 1130 he says uh, this takes effort or work to be understood because it's it was opted to attend only to the effects and not to the causes they wanted to uh, not to the causes that probably should be a period or comma they wanted to resolve it all by the use of force with coercive measures the strategy resulted in failure so now we're changing the paradigms it is a new type of politics that we are applying now uh, frustrates me when I see these uh, typos that I made so this should be new over here <laughs> okay oh great I just made a mess of it we'll just leave it like that for now let me see if it'll go oh lordy see it's hard to fix these things great See if I can put it in here. New. Okay. Okay, so it's a new type of politics that we're applying now. Um, now, I wish I could um, show you at the same time, but I want to make the words big. So I put the times on there that you would look at on the video. If you were watching and you played this side by side, like on a dual monitor like I have, you could see um, what he was saying at that time. For example... Let's let me go to 1207 on here. Right about there. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that on and let it play. And you know what? I need to make that a little louder. For some reason, the, the volume is so low. Things are not cooperating. So he was saying that the mentality So I probably would like to put it a little louder for you on that. Um, so anyway, this is where he was discussing it, and I took it uh, word for word translation there. So, but I, but I, uh, not word for word because I changed it so it sounded right in English. But I'm going to pause that there. Um, so anyway, let's go back to this one. Um, here. So um, now he says 80% of the actions are destined um, uh, uh, without violence for being being without violence. Um, okay, um, this takes effort or work because it was opted to attend only to the effects and not to the causes. They wanted to resolve it all with the use of force, with coercive measures. That strategy resulted in failure. So now we're changing the paradigms. It is a new type of politics that we are applying now. That is why I say we are doing well, because there is more well-being now. This, in turn, is going to help us to gain order and peace. And I can say it to you in a phrase which I use quite often. Peace is the fruit of justice. Uh, for the authoritative mentality, those who want to resolve everything by force, so um, this means nothing to them. But consider that yes it is. We consider that yes it is. In other words, yes it is. Um, uh, important <laughs> that it is important what have we gained well 
now the people have confidence in this strategy. It is not me saying it, but it is said by the Inegi, by the last poll of the Inegi. Uh, the National Institute of Statistics and Geography, Inegi, um, in, uh, so I took this directly from the uh, dictionary. Uh, Inegi, by its name in Spanish, Instituto, Instituto Nacional de Estadística y Geografía, which translates to National Institute of Statistics and Geography. It is an autonomous agency of the Mexican government dedicated to coordinate the national system of statistical and geographical information of the country. And so um, let's go to the next part. Uh, what happened uh, last night? Oh. Uh, how come it's not having everything in there? It's got a whole missing part. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, what happened last night uh, was a different perception. Okay. So they say the poll was done before the occurrences in Culiacán. Um, I would respond to them that even with that occurrence, the people believe in us and support the strategy that we are utilizing because what was done was very irresponsible for a long time. Imagine leaving the youth without options and coining the phrase ninis, which means neither do they work neither do they go to school, and do nothing for them or to help them. Then, when the youth took the road of antisocial conduct, they massacred them. That was what predominated a high index of lethality. Nor is it mentioned how the orders were given from above to clean it, to sweep up, to justify and the data is there. So at 1535 on the video, he says, when, um, when uh, there were more dead than, than dead and detained. Okay, um, that would probably be good for you to see this um, graph that he has here below. Oh my goodness, okay. So this was a chart that showed the perception of the people uh, regarding the government, okay? So the perception of security or insecurity in this case. And um, it doesn't uh, delineate um, exactly what each uh, area is there. I don't, oh, there it is on the bottom. It says um, total... Um, and I, well, let me see, I'm going to go there to where that graph is. Um, so we can use this to tell us where that's at. This uh, graph is at about 1535 on my, um, because I'm having a hard time, um, reading the, uh, cause this is a picture there. Okay. So I'm going to pause it here. That seems like a big difference in time. Okay, so right around here. All right. So I'm going to go back to this video. So this one is where he was talking about the um, this um, graph. And let's see if they have a picture of it again. Okay, so um, at one point they're going to show the graph up, up close because that's how I got the picture. But anyway, he says that at that time there was uh, confrontations. And I'm having a hard time hearing it. Uh, seems quite low. Maybe it's here. Oh, here. 
Uh, the ones that were assassinated, he said. About 50% were assassinated, he said. It was a war. And that's what they, that's what they liked. That's what they are um, longing for. So he was saying that uh, during the um, period of Calderon, so I'm going to go back to the other screen because I want you to see this. Uh, during the period of Calderon, here it is, okay. There were more dead than detained. He said, just allow me to give you some data. In three years during the term of Calderon, there were 160 military and Marines that were assassinated. And during the six-year term, Calderon's, of all the assassinated during the confrontations, almost 50% uh, were uh, assassinated. And it was a war. So this is what they yearn for? This is what they would like us to implement or carry out? Of all the dead that there uh, were uh, during uh, the term of Calderon, that is to say, since 2006 to the present, um, occurred uh, during that six-year term, uh, confrontations between delinquents and armed forces. And within three years of that term, 160 military personnel died. But look here. This does not to be, uh, appear to be in the universal uh, or reforma media, or, you know, they're like newspapers, kind of the equivalent of, um, the inquirer style, uh, media nor in other ones, so that um, so that we can even up. There needs to be a little equilibrium in the management of information, because at times there is quite a bit of imbalances. At the uh, red line uh, is where um, where we came into power. So if you look right here. You can see where they came into power. Um, and you can see that at that time, the tendency was uh, um, started to head downward. See? So when they came into it, it had an upward tendency. And even though there's a lot of violence, it's got a downward uh, trend, which is significant. Because, um, uh, so this was, this um, is where he mentions that this was a um, data that was collected by the uh, Inegi, which was an independent company that uh, uh, graphs statistical data that we discussed earlier. But let's look about uh, lethality. There appears to be a form of amnesia. So we're going to refresh your minds. So how many of these were lethal? Okay, this is the index of lethality charge. Uh, there were more dead than injured. Where you compare the figure of, of the f fatalities, aggression to, okay. So this is gonna be on this other, um, uh, let's see. I want you to see this graph here, okay. So this is where you compare uh, the, uh, this is the top one is the lethality. And this one is uh, injured and these are detained. So if you um, subtract or if you add together both the lethal and I'm sorry, the detained and the injured, it goes to that uh, line that's dotted. So together, combined, they do not add up. So that's less than uh, the amount of dead if you, you know, do a, a comparison um, on that chart. So that's what he was showing is that, yes, you know, there, there was quite a bit of dead. 
And so more than, I would say more than 50%, actually. And um, here it says, if you add up the injured and the detained, there's less, there are less than the dead. That was the lethality index. Uh, when there are more dead, okay, than dead, injured, okay. Now here's ours, okay. So the, uh, below this, you're going to be seeing the other uh, um, graph that there is, okay. I wish this thing would not move in two rows at a time. It's hard to uh, adjust it. But anyway, uh, it is not the uh, war. It is to confront a problem of insecurity and violence in another way. So this is uh, what they refer to as cowardliness, not wearing the pants, lack of character, humiliation. I accept all of it. I prefer this, pointing to the low lethality. So let me show you that. There he's pointing to the low lethality index. And he says, I prefer this. Um, and... Uh, and then he points to the high uh, fatality index. I, I want to have a clear conscience. I want to sleep peacefully. Besides that, I don't want to place anyone at risk of losing their lives, of the Mexican people's lives. And I do not want collateral damage. Um, I also do not want collateral damage. I do not want citizens to be affected. And this politic will not change. So I think that's very admirable on his part uh, that he um, that he was you know willing to take you know all that he had coming from he knew he was going to get attacked by the media and everyone um, by putting people first by uh, putting the 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 lives of the uh, people before that. So um, you can see that, um, oh gosh, I'm sorry. Sometimes this thing will not rotate because I'm, it's human error, of course. So um, now there's another guy that's coming up um, and he also asked about violence, but in a different way. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and discuss it now. Um, this guy from Grupo Imagen, Arturo Paramo, I think he said, and it happened at about uh, 2247 here, let's see. And it looks like I'm missing a whole section there. Um, but anyway, um, so he says, um, this guy here, let me move it there so you could see this guy here. I'm going to put him back on. So this one here, um, he asks, um, he asks, the, the, the graph you showed uh, uh, was perception, right? Amlo says, yes. It is 2% since you came into office, into power. Uh, in that, that, in the perception of the people, it has improved. However, Related to the security data from the Secretary of the Executive of the Systems of Public Security, it says that uh, the hard facts for 2019 are heading towards being the most violent year in the history of Mexico. Evidently, these are not generated by confrontations with the organized crime because the instructions is that they are not to occur. This then this means that the delinquency against the number, so I'm going to go back to the other uh, part here. Uh, okay, so removing this one. So <laughs> you can see my typos there. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I just didn't bother to fix it because I wanted to hurry up and do the video before it gets too late. Um, but, um, okay. So uh, that this means there's delinquency against the population that is generated this type of violence. Otherwise, how do you read the following numbers? It is 25,890 victims of violent crimes 
and 748 are feminicide thus far in your term uh, period. So therefore, what's your take? If you are on your way uh, on our, if we are on our way according to the data, this is not a, a point of time, but constantly occurring in our country. Uh, and then at 2400, uh, because there was a precise tendency, and this is where he says at 2400. So let me go there. Okay, so I'm going to start it there. And I'm going to put it back on the other video. So this is, I'm going to go ahead and uh, read this here, but first I'm going to put the other video on, okay? So, so he says, we don't, we can't expect crime to end from morning to day. But take a look here. So this is where he shows them the data. So here you can see, this is where we came in. And this was the tendency. It was going up, 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 up. And then we came into office at its height. And then this is after. This is one month af after. So in July, this is the homicides in July. So then it starts having a downward trend. So in September, it was there. So what was gained? So this was the tendency. So this is what was gained. It leveled out. We detained it. Held it back. And we would like for it to continue falling downward. But the first thing was first to detain it. See where you can see the line where it was going upward? And it no longer went as high as it had in the tendency. So now he's saying, put on the, the slide regarding... Um, so he's asking them to now put on the slide regarding um, uh, Grand Theft Auto because that is another crime that people uh, turn over to the police. Because there's a lot of crimes that maybe are not um, uh, complained about because people have fears or whatever. But when it comes to cars regarding insurance and all that, people will um, notify that the cars were stolen. So you can have a more accurate data based on the amount of uh, vehicle thefts. So he's asking for that slide now. So he says here there's no, um, like, uh, cifra negra would be kind of like someone putting in false information or, or generating, um, like, you know how they suspect that, that the uh, increased violence is being generated by the uh, uh, ex-presidents uh, from the PRI, PAN, and PRD uh, because they are hoping to be destructive towards AMLO's uh, cam um, like campaigning against him. So they're causing, uh, because they were involved in, in organized crime and they have a lot of friends in there, uh, that they can cause and generate and even pay people off to to generate uh, violent behavior, to to uh, influence the uh, appearance of uh, increased violence, uh, to try and uh, keep AMLO from looking like he's actually making, gaining some ground and doing better for the country. Because they're trying to make it look like, oh, things are worse, you know, since we came out of office. But of course, that's not the case. But so he's saying that the, um, chart that relates to Grand Theft Auto is not influenced. So there he shows how far they went down with the... Uh, so this is the 
This chart here is the chart regarding uh, Grand Theft Auto, ve vehicular, see, th vehicular theft. Um, and he, it was on an upward trend. And here you can clearly see that it is now coming down. Whereas the other uh, graph, it still showed an improvement, but here you can see it more clearly. You can see exactly how it's coming down and in a very drastic measure as well. And it's considerable, he says. And this one, he says, you can verify yourself by um, uh, going, uh, looking up the uh, statistical data by insurance companies or communicate with in insurance companies and see if this is not the case. So that's what he says. You can get it from the data of the insurance companies. So he says, so therefore, here we go. We're doing well. He said, little by little. He goes, ah, uh, okay. <laughs> and then he says, next question, uh, Mr. President. And he wanted to make a commentary regarding what happened uh, yesterday with all those uh, officials that were trying to break down the door yesterday. In fact, I don't know if you were listening or watching yesterday, but we could hear, hear like some, some. Uh, it sounded like bombs or something. Uh, and he said, oh, it's just some firecrackers. And I thought, well, that's odd that there's firecrackers. I didn't think anything of it. But later on, I found out that the um, officials, uh, governors, and uh, presidents of uh, uh, the different um, areas of, of Mexico had come, uh, well, not every area, but just the ones that were with the P PRI, the P uh, PRD, and the PAN parties. They gathered up a bunch of people which again are usually put together by those ex-presidents trying to generate dissension and violence and make it look like, ah, this place is falling apart. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I heard it, I heard it yesterday when, when I was translating that, that there was something, somebody, he said, oh, it's just a few little firecrackers. And I was like, oh, interesting. Why, why is there firecrackers? But I didn't think nothing of it. Now I know why. <laughs> because they, the officials were outside banging on the door and throwing firecrackers to make it sound like they were bombing. But they didn't want to get in too much trouble, so they didn't actually use any uh, firearms. But I think using uh, firecrackers really is, is uh, bad as well. So he's asking, do you know who gave the instruction? Do you know why it happened yesterday? He says they were trying to get in with use of force. And he says they did not behave in a correct manner. So he says they they're overcome by their anxiety of opposition. La their desperation. Let me move this over to the right. I don't want it on his head. And those that are in charge of uh, safety and security here, and uh, they felt that they might be able to get in. Uh, here, let me try to move this up a little bit. For some reason, I cannot seem to get it up or down. There we go. Well, maybe there's just no more room. Okay. So, so the safety and security team outside the palace thought that they might get in. So by the way, in case you didn't know, 
yesterday, um, all these uh, political people, uh, governors from different states, like I said, PRD, PRI, and PAN uh, party people, uh, had showed up, and they uh, were threatening and uh, demanding to go in and talk to the president about the budget. They wanted more on their budget. So that's why they had to succumb to this behavior. Really? And he says, this is very lamentable. By the way, uh, what they did in order to stop them eventually was to throw a, um, uh, what do you call that, pepper spray uh, bomb. Uh, the, the, the people, the personnel, the security personnel put a bomb up against the, the wall and did not throw it at anybody, but it generated enough uh, pepper spray that, that they dispersed and got away from the door. So he says, I'm going to take this opportunity to let the municipal uh, presidents know. Goodness gracious. Oh, my word. I just messed it all up, didn't I? Okay, let me see. Uh, we're going to go a little bit after that. A little bit after that. Okay. So it's a little bit after that. And I wish I would have put the time on there. So here he says they thought they could use force to break in or come in. So he wants to take the opportunity to let the municipal um, uh, presidents know. So I'm going to write down this time, 2725 uh, president, municipal. Okay. Uh, anyway, so he, he says he's going to let them know something. And I thought this was significant because... Um, rather than being angry and uh, having an attitude because they were so poorly, uh, behaved so poorly. I mean, these are people that are his um, officials, the ones that supposedly uh, are part of his government. Um, but they're, um, uh, there's a lot of information going on right now about how many of them are involved in organized crime and who are being paid by the DEA and the US government. So there's a whole investigation that's happening on that and they're all scared and up in arms and their little uh, money cow is gonna go away because they're about to stop that, by the way. So anyway, he says he's gonna take this opportunity to let them know a little something. So because in case they don't know about this, this is not the place that you need to address uh, this situation. So if you have some a claim to make or request to make, this is not the place to do it. Now, he says they have to go to the cabinet of the deputies. La función exclusiva de la Cámara de Diputados. So he says it is the exclusive uh, job of the Camera of Deputies. Well, so let, let me see. That, uh, that doesn't sound right to me. Let me see what um, that... Uh, Cámara de Diputados. What is the actual translation of that? So let's see. Cámara de Diputados. Okay. Trans Chamber of Deputies. Okay. So that's a that's a new word for me. So I better um, uh, put that on there. Cámara de Diputados is Chamber of Deputies. I'm going to paste that on there. Uh, Camera de Diputados. I need to have that. Okay. So anyway, he says, so it's the uh, specific job of the Chamber of Deputies. Es la del 
Their job is the approval of the budget. So the executive, which is him, sends the projects. Um, not only the project of the, um, the, uh, <laughs> I dislocated my arm once hitting a fly. <laughs> I just, I might have done it right now. Uh, anyway, um, the, the job that they do is, is, um, also, re uh, having to do with income, uh, the law on income. Ley de ingresos. So I'm going to look that up as well because I'm learning all these new terms today. Ley de ingresos. Okay. Income law. Okay. So that's just what it sounded like. <laughs> okay. Como el presupuesto. So they deal with both income law and the budgets. And it, So they also deal with the uh, budget that they received by the, the judicial department. And it cannot be touched by them. It cannot be touched by the judicial, um, I guess the judicial can't touch it. So it is sent. The same uh, in the case of uh, autonomous organisms or agencies. Then it is sent to the legislative power. So in the case of uh, income law, so in this case, the um, uh, branch of, um, uh, what is it, uh, deputies would, um, let me see. Wait, I want to put that back on there because I already forgot that term. Okay, Chamber of Deputies. Um, and the, um, well, so it's done by a couple of, oh my goodness, I just lost my place. <laughs> Thank goodness I wrote that down, 2725. Okay, right about there. So, so it is sent to the legislative power, and in the case of the law of income, it has to be approved and reviewed by, in its case, the camera, the uh, Chamber of Deputies and the Chamber of Depu of uh, Senators. And then uh, it was approved uh, when it's approved by the the deputies and the law of uh, income and the chamber of deputies. Then it needs to be approved by the chamber of senators. And then after the law of income is approved. Then it is the law that permits to account with the resources in order to finance 
the budget. Una vez que se la ley de so once the law of income has been approved, ya es exclusiva de la Cámara de Diputados. Ya... And then it becomes an exclusive faculty of the Camera uh, Chamber of Deputies. No interviene, ni siquiera. And at that point, there is no intervention, not even by la Cámara de Senadores. The, the Chamber of uh, Senators. Para aprobar el presupuesto in order to approve the budget. Entonces, me mucho. So this is why it is very strange to me que esto no lo sepan. that they are not aware of this. Los the municipal presidents It is not here that they need to go, right? Lo que pasa es que había... So he says what uh, uh, has occurred is that there was Eso. that it was politics. He says politics, right? He says yes, exactly. Sí. Yes, the protest was actually a political uh, situation. Yes, with the desire to provoke and incite. Yes, it was a provocation uh, from the municipal presidents of PAN. And I would also recommend to them that if they want to have a more budget and so they need to uh, take uh, this into effect and we will help them with it. We'll give them the formula of how to save how to lower their salaries de los altos públicos, of the high functioning officials gana los and how much do the municipal presidents earn gana los and how much do the redidores earn? I don't know who they are. Si bajan los gastos, and if they lower their expenses, they'll save money for the budget. And if they do not buy luxury vehicles, if they don't take lots of expensive trips, constantly to foreign places, And if they prevent corruption, so what happened before? This is why. That's why this, this is also disconcerted. Because at the same time, it it has to do with readjustments, and we have to understand it. It's not anything to be alarmed about. Negociaban. They used to negotiate. Les decía yo de que I used to say that ahora, por ejemplo, están pidiendo now, for example, they're asking que se aumente So they want us to um, 
kind of falsely increase the deficit. That is to say that the government uh, uh, contracts some more debt so that they can have more money. So they're saying that if we raise or increase the deficit, then we would get 25 million thousand additional uh, pesos. And that um, money bag, or purse they call it, then we could spread it amongst ourselves. We could split it up. But we cannot do this. Or this is something they won't do. We have to have healthy public finances. And we are convinced that if there is no corruption and there is austerity, which, by the way, means living a meager way, not spending a lot, so he added Republican, Republican austerity. The budget will suffice. <coughs> and there will be enough. So just look at this. This year we've saved 600,000 million. Because we do not have that special insurance for high-functioning officials. They even did plastic surgery on themselves. He says they even stretched their faces at <laughs> the expense of the people. Six thousand million. This is how much we're saving just on that. And another six thousand million we're saving is because we don't have that little secret treasure box, that special box. that was designated for high-functioning officials. Let me explain to you, or shall I explain to you what that special savings chest was? Of course, you probably already uh, sh assuredly know but it's important to me that the people know. If a high-functioning official earned 200000 he would uh, put as a savings 10%, let's say. So say that was 200000 he's saving. I'm sorry, 20000 And then from the money that was the money of the people in the budget, 
then from that budget, from the people's money, they would take another 20000 So they could double their money. So then he was actually saving 40000 Whenever that high-functioning official left uh, his job with the government or changed jobs, or if yeah, if he changed jobs, and this was done by high-functioning officials at the highest level. Famous guys. But that would fall on you guys to investigate it. You that are professional, um, how should I say it? Uh, someone who's uh, paid to be onlookers. Bueno, ¿cuánto costaba mantener? So how much did it cost us to keep that box yearly? Six thousand million pesos. And so how much are we also uh, saving on this that generates that is generating such bothersome behavior. No es por eso. It's not because of that. Que hay al that there's questioning in the government. Pero, también, nos estamos hablando seis mil millones de pesos en publicidad. We're also saving six thousand million in publicity expenses. Es que lo ejercido so because that which was exercised in the past fueron alrededor de 10 mil millones de pesos. It was around 10 million pesos. Y ahora and now we're going to exercise around 4,000. But what was exercised last year is not all that it was. We're talking about what was presented. Why? Because there was extras. So all these things are savings that are helping us. And in the budget, so we can have, so we can have a budget and not have to increase taxes or create new taxes. And so, so, nor do we make uh, increase the deficit to increase the debt. Claro que causa of course, that is generating some um, bothered. Some people are being bothered by this. Por ejemplo, ¿cuánto se le entregaba a las organizaciones? So, for example, how much were we giving, or were the organizations being given? Social, civil organizations. Thousands of millions of pesos. And we do not do that like that anymore. All the money and all the support 
are given to the people directly. So basically what he did was he got rid of the middleman because these agencies, each one was taking a cut and the people were not getting their just desserts. So the beneficiaries are getting the money directly. So he said, what about the um, reduction uh, for the uh, executive department? And, and the president asked, what uh, uh, cut, budget cut? He says his name is Antonio Lopez from the periodical La Razón. So they're, the complaint of these uh, people that came yesterday is that they had five million uh, removed out of their budgets. Esos fondos, uno, so these funds is what they're asking about. And one of them was a mining fund, and another one was a fund para los pueblos mágicos. that was for the magical towns. And another one that the one that they're most complaining about is one that's for Fort the Moon. Eh, Fort Asec, me parece que or Fort the Sec. Es destinado precisamente para, pues para, para la seguridad. Eh, Which is supposed to be money that's supposed to be destined for security. Preguntar si en el proyecto que el Ejecutivo envió venían previstos estos recortes. So in the, they want to know if in the uh, budget that the executive sent, had they pre, uh, previewed or seen that these budget cuts were there. And then yesterday you were talking about wastefulness. And so uh, do you consider that there's wastefulness in the municipalities? And he says yes. Yes, of course there's wastefulness in the municipalities. He says we need to do a revision or review, but we just haven't had enough time, I guess. But he's, oh, actually, he said it doesn't correspond to us because the municipalities are free. It's like the judicial power or the legislative power. <coughs> But here we have discussed So let me find out what regidores are because that's the second time they've mentioned that and I don't know what regidores are Regidores uh, Aldermen uh, Government re re Adjective. I don't know. It, it's some kind of a position. Re, um, alderman. I'm not really sure what an alderman does. But uh, he says there's aldermen that earn. Let's see. How much did he say they earn? Eso es general. Okay. I'm. I didn't get to see that. Eso es general. Why do I keep missing? Okay. Okay. So I'm I'm gonna go back because I don't know what exactly he said they get. So 
So he's saying that there has to be a revision, but it doesn't fall on his department. But here we've talked about it, that there's eldermen that earn a hundred, wow, they earn a hundred and fifty thousand to two hundred thousand a month. Okay, that is, I think, more than the president almost, or, or it is more than the president, right? And these are just eldermen. And in order to work, uh, sign for an, uh, a work, you know, I'm going to look up what elderman does. What does an elderman do? Um, I'm trying to see, because uh, I don't know what they do. Is um, a selected member of your municip municipal council. Uh, it's, okay, let me uh, put that up there for you to see. Okay, wait. I'm going to remove this screen so you can see the other one. Okay, so an alderman is an elected member of a municipal council in England. Okay, uh, so... So it's just a council member. Or, okay, it says, next in status to the mayor. Okay, that's significant. Okay. So they're next in status to the mayor, kind of like a sub-mayor. <laughs> and they earn one hundred and fifty to 200000 I can only imagine what the mayor is earning then. So apparently um, they charge in order to um, uh, come to an agreement or to agree to something if somebody wants them to agree. Para que le aprueben, so in order for them to approve eh, something, un informe al presidente, a veces que les tienen que dar They have to give them additional money whenever they, sometimes, oh, they have to give them additional money in order to get them to make a decision on something. Eso es and that is in general. No, no, hay reporte. Es lo que establece la ley. no, there is no report. He says that what is established by the law. La ley de there exists a law, the law of coordination of the fi uh, fiscal. Let me see what a fiscal is. <laughs> a fiscal. Fiscal. Now, a fiscal, I thought it was like a district attorney or something, but let me just make sure I get this exactly. A uh, fiscal. Uh, it's relating to government revenue taxes. Okay, so it is like the tax collector. Mm -hmm. Nosotros no podemos transferir menos recursos de lo que establece la ley. So we cannot transfer less resources than what the law establishes. So the federal government recovers una formula, and using a certain formula, se fondos, they transfer funds a los to the states. La de los estados, the majority of the states integran su presupuesto con they uh, do the uh, budget using uh, the participation of federal agencies. Son muy pocos. 
there are very few that have their own income or a considerable portion that is their own uh, money. The city of Mexico has about 60% of its budget that are their own money. But there are some states where 95% of their budget are federal participants. It's a formula of a transferring of resources, which is <coughs> trans, uh, done by law, and from that, which is transferred to the states, a certain percentage goes to the municipalities and that is by law and in the case of the miners fund Let me bring this down a bit so it doesn't look out of proportion there. Okay. Existe un alegato, una there exists some kind of a, a complaint a and a controversy in the, in the Supreme Court of Justice. Because we sustain that those funds are supposed to go are supposed to go to the mining towns to the municipal uh, areas where there's mining going on. And that it needs to be delivered by the Federation. Esto and we sustain this because it is a budget that was created four years ago and used to be sent to the... No that it was uh, supposedly sent to the uh, states, but it was not going to the municipal areas. And it happened to me. I have that experience. Where I went to a, a municipal, a mining municipal area. Let me make it a little bigger because it seems like I, I'm wasting space here. Okay. Uh, from Chihuahua and I asked them the citizens if they knew about that fund and if it had arrived and no one knew about it and if the and if the funds did arrive, they would use that fund for other things. Entonces, so then we decided que esos van a de 
And so now we've decided that that fund is going to go directly to them, a los beneficiarios. to the beneficiaries. Esto generó una controversia. So this generated a controversy que está, eh, por that is about to be resolved in the judicial courts or power. Pero no hay nada. But there is not legally anything. Por eso sostengo and that is why I sustain que se de that they got confused about what window they were supposed to go to. Because also, or additionally, or including, si fuese que se les están quitando, if it was a case that something was being taken away from them, these five million, thousand million. El poder que tiene la the power that has the facility or, or that is has the faculty over that Para sobre in order to decide over the budget So they're threatening that if they're not getting that money, that they're going to come with like 10,000 people to the palace. So, okay, now I get it. So there was some money that was supposed to be going to certain people that was being sent to the governors and um, uh, municipal officials or presidents. And so what they were doing was they were at times not even giving it to them or letting them know that the money was there or they were just utilizing it for other things. And so now that they kind of adopted it as part of their money, they don't want to let it go. They don't want to uh, let go of that money that they were getting, that they were keeping that didn't belong to them, that it belonged to the miners and in some cases to other people. So funds that were being sent for other people, just like in the other uh, cases, of uh, them uh, uh, going to other agencies, even when it was going to the uh, governors and the uh, municipal presidents, they were keeping the money for themselves or using it for something else other than the purpose it was intended. So now the president's trying to fix that and get the money to who it needs to go. And so that's why they were trying to tear down the door yesterday. <laughs> And so they're also threatening to close the airport. Oh, and what would you say to them? And he says, so they can exercise. I'm, I'm going to tell them to exercise their right to manifestation. Let them come. <coughs> and to come early and to come more frequently. And to wake up early and come. He says they should do it for about a week. He goes, but not at seven. Because then by seven, the conference has already started. So let them come protest at six so that they have to get up at 4.30. Oh, let them do it for a month like that. Eso está mejor. He says that would be better. Que el eh. Then uh, them closing the airport. Eso este. Lo hizo Fox. Only Fox did that. Este. Y el banco. And the fund. They attempted to do it then when it was uh, 
when Salinas. when they <clears throat> uh, got a uh, concert action with Salinas. And so they uh, they started uh, taking the streets and they took the airport and what they wanted was a negotiation. It's okay for them to protest and manifest themselves. Yes. Um, so they did it at the door because they felt that that they um, they were forcing the door and they were also um, uh, pushing people aside and those that attend the ones that are um, doing citizen attention so they pushed them out of the way So he says, okay, so now this, she says, how come this time they acted like that with the officials, but when the other young people were there uh, throwing bottles and, and uh, misbehaving, how come you guys didn't act out and throw uh, the uh, uh, pepper spray on them? Why just these guys? He said, well, it's because they felt um, that they were being, uh, that they were uh, attacking them personally and uh, like they were trying to get in. Uh, so that's how they felt that, that in order to be safe was that they had to do that. So uh, there's, um, you know, that's that's what they decided to do. So um, that's all, that's that's what it took for them to feel safe. So, um, so he says, I want to say to the municipal uh, presidents to give a good example and not to behave like that. So take a look at what Gandhi used to do. and what Mandela used to do, and Luther King, and, Luther King. and to bet on the non-violence. And to become serene and tranquil. And do not mix administrative matters with party matters. Because they're from PAN and PRD. And they're opposers of ours. And the truth is, we have nothing to do with we have nothing to do with this matter. We send the budget. That's the that's the only part they do is just send off the budget. So it doesn't belong to us. It's not like before. This has already changed. And I'm not going to get involved in their shenanigans. Esos acuerdos 
Those agreements that they made in the dark. Or to suborn. in order to govern. All of that is done away with. These concertations, none of that. To guarantee liberties and right to manifestation and to prevent violence and not to fall into provocation. Peace above all. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. Yes, the people at the door felt that they were very aggressive. So she says, were they acting so violent that they wound up sending the um, OC spray? Así los de la yes, the, the people at the door felt that they were being very violent. Muy, este, they were very aggressive. And that's why they made that decision. Yes. Uh, do you agree with their decision to to send the gas on them? <coughs> yes, he agrees with it because perhaps it prevented a more grave situation. Yo soy pacifista. Yes, I'm a pacifist. And I fought for many years. Via the peaceful route. And it would even be convenient. That we would uh, teach or empower as to how to protest Con with efficiency Sin and without violence. Okay, you guys, I'm going to uh, leave it to here today uh, because I think this is a very interesting topic and I think I'm just going to go on. Uh, with another video for this so that it won't be so long for you guys um, and I'll do another uh, set for the rest of it because it's quite long and uh, I know some people just don't have that much of a, a you know a will to stick around that long plus some people have work and don't have time or just don't want to sit there that long to deal with this kind of stuff anyway enjoy bye Oh, and by the way, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Now, I have a channel called English Amlovision. I put it in English because um, I'm trying to separate my Spanish um, channel uh, viewers to, from my English uh, channel viewers. So um, if you wouldn't mind, um, subscribe to my English Amlovision channel. And then if you would give me... Um, uh, thumbs up and comments. I love answering uh, comments. It gives me great joy to see what you guys have to say and to answer you back. So um, thanks a lot. Bye.